Yeah, question seven then um, starts off by, it, so it's a first of the two trick questions on the paper. So it starts off by asking us to use the chain rule to show that if we write y equals sec x as y equals cos to the minus one, we will be able to show that it comes to that term there. So that's what we're going to work on. So we're going to use our chain rule. So y equals u to the minus one, and u is going to equal to cos x. So then we're going to find du, dy by du, and we're going to find du by dx. So to find dy by du, take one off the power, sorry, bring down the power, take one off the power. So bring down the minus one, so we're going to get minus u, take one off the power to the minus two. And cos x will um, differentiate to minus sine x. Right, so chain rule then says that we're going to do dy by du times by du by dx because that gives us dy by dx. So in doing this, then this term here, let's just write it out exactly as it is. So minus u, so minus cos x to the minus two times by minus sine x. Okay. So that's what we're that's where we're at at this stage. To the power of minus two, so that is the same as saying minus one over cos squared x times by minus sine x. Okay. Now there's nothing wrong with putting the the squared in there. Um, it's not actually it's, it means exactly the same thing as having it outside. Okay. So either way you're saying the same thing. So we can see that we've got a minus times by a minus, so let's make that positive. Bring the sine x on the top here, and that's being divided by cos x squared. Now, cos x squared is the same as saying cos times cos. So this is the same as having sine over cos x times cos x. And we can then sort of divide this up into two fractions. I say divide, I don't really mean divide, I mean split. So it's sine x over the first cos x multiplied by one over the second cos x. So what I've done is I've split cos x all squared into cos times cos, and then I've just pulled this fraction apart into its two, into two separate fractions. Now, the value of the fraction has not changed because when we multiply fractions together, we will just end up back there. So there's nothing mathematically incorrect that we've done here. So then looking at what we've got, we've got sine over cosine, which is tan x. And we've got one over cos, which is sec x. So I've got tan x times sec x or tan x sec x. And if we go back to the question, that was what we were looking to show that dy by dx was equal to sec x times tan x. So we've used the chain rule to um, multiply this out and then shown that we can split it into, into two parts. One is tan x and the other is sec x. So that's um, part A of that question. So that was worth the two marks at the beginning there. So for part B then, I've just brought in a little snippet of your formula book um, to remind us how to integrate, um, sorry, to differentiate these two functions. So we've got our function of x, which is 2 tan x minus 3 sec x. And quite important for this question, it's only being defined between 0 and pi by 2, or, or sort of 0 and 90 degrees if you'd rather. So we're only looking at a small part of this function. So we're trying to find the value of the y coordinate of the stationary point on this curve. So to find stationary points, we need to find the gradient. So differentiate and put it equal to zero. So I'm differentiating tan x. So we can see that tan x goes to sec x. So it's going to be two, so a sec squared x there. And we can see that sec x goes to sec x tan x. So we're gonna have three sec x tan x. So that's my first step 
which is to differentiate both functions. Now, you might notice, or you should notice, that there is a common factor in here. Both terms have a sec term in them. So I'm going to take the sec out as a common factor. So it's going to be 2 sec x minus 3 tan x. Okay, and the reason why we're going to do that is because we're about to put this thing to zero. So we're going to say, well, we're looking for the stationary point, so that's when the, um, the gradient is zero. So there's one stationary point, which is when sec x equals zero, and the other stationary point is when um, 2 sec x minus 3 tan x is equal to zero. So there are my two options. I've either got sec x is nothing, or 2 sec x minus 3 tan x is nothing. Now, just quickly, we will have a look at this one here. So this is the same as 1 over cos x being equal to 0. And we can't really um, sort of reciprocate that as such. And so that that's doesn't exist. So that's not, there's not a solution there. Okay. Which is fine because the one we're trying to work on is this one here. So we want to try and find a solution for this problem. So we're going to start off by putting the tan onto the other side. So I've got 2 sec x equals 3 tan x. And whenever I'm using um, the sec, um, cosec and cot identities, I try to quickly go back to what I'm more used to, which are my sine, cosine and cos. So this is sorry, 2 over cos x equals 3 sine x over cos x. So I've rewritten tan and I've rewritten cosine there. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to multiply both sides by cos x. Um, or I'm going to multiply this cos x. So, so I'm multiplying this side by cos x over cos, uh, by cos x. So in doing that, I'm going to end up moving that cos x up there. So I've got two cos x over cos x equals 3 sin x. Okay, So I've multiplied both sides by cos x. We can see that we've got a cos x on the top here and a cos x on the bottom, so they cancel, giving me 2 equals 3 sin x. And therefore, in the location of the stationary point, sin x is equal to 2 thirds. Okay, so sin x is equal to 2 thirds. Now let's just go back to the question. Okay, it's after, it's looking for the coordinate station, point, but thereafter it in the form of a third, an exact value. So I don't want to do inverse sine of 2 thirds at this point, okay, because I'm going to be removing myself from the absolute value. This is actually the question where we're using exact values, so we're going to have to use our right angle triangle Sokotoa relationships. So I'll just draw out my rough right angle triangle and this is for the angle x. Now sine is found by doing the opposite over the hypotenuse. So this tells me that the opposite side is 2, the hypotenuse must be 3. Okay, so that's how I would find sine. Now what I want to do in um, for this is then be able to find the other identities as well. So, um, or more specifically, I want to find the, the side length there on this triangle. So I've got, using Pythagoras, my unknown squared plus 2 squared equals 3 squared. So this tells me that my unknown here is 9 minus 4. Um, so my unknown squared is 9 minus 4. Unknown squared is 5. So my unknown is root 5. So I've used Pythagoras there to find out that length. So what this then allows me to sort of deduce, if you like, is that if I wanted to find cos x, that would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tan x would be 2 over root 5. So this, these three things are only true, so this is true for the stationary point. 
because these are only the case when 2 sec x minus 3 tan x equals 0. So it's only true at this stage. Okay, so I'm jumping about a bit, but let's just go back up to the question because we're very close to finding our answer here. So find the value of the y coordinate for the stationary point of the graph. So the y coordinate is found by substituting our values into this function. Now we've just worked out what tan x is. We've just worked out that tan x is 2 root 5. And we can then work out what sec x is. So I'm just going to grab the question actually. I'm just going to bring it down with us because I think that's going to be the fastest way for us to be able to see what's going on here. So just keep going, bringing the question down. There we go. So we are trying to find the y value for 2 tan x minus 3 sec x. So 2 tan x is 2 lots of 2 over root 5. And 3 sec x minus 3 sec x, well sec is 1 over cos. So we're going to take that to the power of minus 1 effectively. So it's 3 lots of 3 over root 5. We've flipped over cos x. And in doing that, that's going to give us the y value. So this is what tan x is equal to at the stationary point. That's what we had up there. Sec x is the reciprocal of that one. So just to finish this question off then, we're going to have um, 4 over root 5 minus 9 over root 5. Okay. Now, if you were just to put that into your calculator, you would... Um, you would find out the correct answer. Or if we work out the fact we've got our common denominator, we've got minus five over root five. And again, our calculator then just gives us that as minus root five. And so P and Q, well, P is minus one and Q is five. And there we have our six marks for that question.